Greetings. Welcome to All for the Journey. I'm your journey reader, Alicia Smith. Today's reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapters 21 through 24. Our scheduled reading follows the Bridges for Peace, Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. So let's begin with prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you for another day. Lord God, we just thank you for bringing us here, Lord God, and having time for you, Lord God. We ask that you would help us to dive into your word, Lord God. Open up our hearts, Lord God. Open up our minds, Lord God, to receive what you're saying to us, Lord God. And we ask that you would help us to apply it to our lives, Lord God, and live out the life that you have designed for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isaiah 21, a message about Babylon. This message came to me concerning Babylon, the desert by the sea. Disaster is roaring down on you from the desert, like a whirlwind sweeping in from Najib. I see a terrifying vision. I see the betrayer betraying, the destroyer destroying. Go ahead, you Emilites and maids, attack and lay siege. I will make an end to all the groaning, groaning and Babylon calls. My stomach aches and burns with pains. Sharp pains of anguish are upon me, like those of a woman in labor. I grow faint when I hear what God is planning. I am too afraid to look. My mind reels and my heart aches, my heart races. I long for evening to come, but now I am terrified of the dark. Look, they are preparing a great feast. They are spreading rugs for people to sit on. Everyone is eating and drinking, but quick. Grab your shields and prepare for battle. You are being attacked. Meanwhile, the Lord said to me, put a watchman on the city wall. Let him shout out what he sees. He should look for chariots drawn by pairs of horses and for riders on donkeys and camels. Let the watchman be fully alert. Let the watchman call out day after day. I have stood on the watchtower, my Lord, night after night. I have remained at my post. Now at last, look, here comes a man in a chariot with a pair of horses. Then the watchman said, Babylon is fallen, fallen. All the idols of Babylon lie on the ground. O people, thresh shed and winnowed. I have told you everything the Lord of the armies has said, everything the God of Israel has told me. A message about Eden. This message came to me concerning Eden. Someone from Eden keeps calling to me. Watchman, how much longer until morning? When will the night be over? The watchman replies, morning is coming, but night will soon return. If you wish to ask again, then come back and ask. A message about Arabia. This message came to me concerning Arabia. Old caravans from Eden. High in the deserts of Arabia, O people of Tema, bring water to these thirsty people, food to these weary refugees. They have fled from the sword, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and the terrors of battle. The Lord said to me, within a year and counting each day, all the glory of Kedar will come to an end. Only a few of its courageous archers will survive. I, the Lord, God of Israel have spoken. Isaiah 22, a message about Jerusalem. This message came to me concerning Jerusalem, the Valley of Vision. What is happening? Why is everyone running to the rooftops? The whole city is in a terrible uproar. What do I see in this revealing city? Bodies are laying everywhere, killed not in battle, but by famine and disease. All your leaders have fled. They surrendered without resistance. The people tried to slip away, but they were captured too. That's why I said, leave me alone to weep. Do not try to comfort me. Let me cry for my people as I watch them being destroyed. Oh, what a day of crushing defeat. What a day of confusion and terror brought by the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies upon the Valley of Visions. The walls of Jerusalem have been broken and cries of death echo from the mountainsides. Emelites are the archers with their chariots and charioteers. The men of Kerr hold up the shields. Chariots fill your beautiful valleys and charioteers storm your gates. Judah's defense have been stripped away. You run to the armory of your weapons. You inspect the breaks in the walls of Jerusalem. You store water in your lower pools. 
You survey the houses and tear some down for stone to strengthen the walls. Between the city walls, you build a server for water from the old pool. But you never, you never ask for help from the one who did all this. You never considered the one who planned this long ago. At that time, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, called to you to weep and mourn. He told you to shave your heads in sorrow for your sins and to wear clothes of burlap to show your remorse. But instead, you dance and play. You slaughter cattle and kill sheep. You feast on meat and drink wine. You say, let's feast and drink, for tomorrow we die. The Lord of heaven's armies has revealed this to me. To the day you die, you will never be forgiven for this sin. That is the judgment of the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. A message for Shebna. This is what the Lord, the Lord of Heaven's armies, said to me. Confront Shebna, the palace administrator, and give him this message. Who do you think you are? And what are you doing here, building a beautiful tomb for yourself, a monument high up in the rock? For the Lord is about to hurl you away, mighty men. He is going to grab you, crumble you into a ball, and toss you away into a distant, barren land. There you will die, and your glorious chariots will be broken and useless. You are a disgrace to your master. Yes, I will drive you out of the office, the Lord says. I will pull you down from your high position, and then I will call my servant, Elakim, son of Helakiah, to replace you. I will dress him in your royal robes, and will give him your title and your authority, and he will be a father to the people of Jerusalem and Judah. I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. He will bring honor to his family's name, and I will drive him firmly in the place, firmly in place like a nail in the wall. They will give him great responsibility, and he will bring honor to even the lowest member of his family. But the Lord of heaven's armies also says, The time will come when I will pull out the nail that seems so firm. It will come out and fall to the ground. Everything it supports will fall with it. I, the Lord, have spoken. Isaiah 23, a message about Tyre. This message came to me concerning Tyre. Well, you trading ships of tarnish. For the harbor and houses of Tyre are gone. The rumors you heard in Cyprus are all true. Mourn in silence, you people of the coast and you merchants of Sidon. Your traders crossed the sea, sailing over deep waters. They brought you grain from Egypt and harvest from along the Nile. You were the marketplace of the world, but now you are put to shame, city of Sidon. For Tyre, the fortress of the sea says, now I am childless, I have no sons or daughters. When Egypt hears the news about Tyre, there will be great sorrow. Send word now to tarnish. Well, you people who live in distant lands, is this silent ruin all that is left of once your joyous city? What a long history was yours. Think of all the colonists you sent to distant places. Who, was brought, who has brought this disaster on Tyre? The great creator of kingdoms. Her traders were all princes. Her merchants were nobles. The Lord of Heaven's armies has done it to destroy your pride and bring low all Earth's nobility. Come, people of Tarnish, sweep over the land like the flooding Nile, for Tyre is defenseless. The Lord held out his hand over the sea and shook the kingdoms of the earth. He has spoken out against Phoenicia, ordering that her fortress be destroyed. He says, Never again will you rejoice, O daughter of Sidon, for you have been crushed. Even if you flee to Cyprus, you will find no rest. Look at the land of Babylonia. The people of that land are gone. The Assyrians have handed Babylon over to the wild animals of the desert. They have brought siege ramps. They have built siege ramps against its walls and torn down its palaces and turned it into a heap of rubble. Well, you ships of tarnish, for your harbor is destroyed. For 70 years, the length of a king's life, Tyre will be forgotten. 
but then the city will come back to life as in the song about the prostitute. Take a harp and walk the streets. You've forgotten Harlan. Make sweet melody and sing your song so you will be remembered again. Yes, after 70 years, the Lord will revive Tyre, but she will be no different than she was before. She will again be a prostitute to all kingdoms around the world. But in the end, her profits will be given to the Lord. Her wealth will not be hoarder, but will provide good food and fine clothing for the Lord's priests. Isaiah 24 Destruction of the earth. Look, the Lord is about to destroy the earth and make it a waste, a vast wasteland. He devastates the surface of the earth and scatters the people, priests and lay people, servants and masters, maids and mistresses, buyers and sellers, lenders and borrowers, bankers and debtors. None will be spared. The earth will be completely empty and looted. The Lord has spoken. The earth mourns and dries up, and the, waste, and the land wastes away and withers. Even the greatest people on earth waste away. The earth suffers for the sins of its people, for they have twisted God's, twisted God's instructions and violated his laws and broken his everlasting covenant. Therefore, therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must pay the price for their sins. They are destroyed by fire, and only a few are left alive. The grapevines waste away, and there is no new wine. All the merrymakers sigh and mourn. The cheerful sound of tambourines is still. The happy cries of celebration are heard no more. The melodious chords of the harps are silent. Gone are the joys of wine and song. Alcoholic drink turns bitter in the mouth. The city rives in chaos. Every home is locked to keep out intruders. Mobs gather in the streets crying out for wine. Joy has turned to gloom. Gladness has been banished from the land. The city is left in ruins, its gates battered down. Throughout the earth, the story is the same. Only a remnant is left, like the stray olives left on a tree or the few grapes left on the vine after harvest. But all who are left shout and sing for joy. Those in the West praise the Lord's majesty. In Eastern lands give glory to the Lord. In the lands beyond the sea, praise the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. We hear songs of praise from the ends of the earth, songs that give glory to the righteous one. But my heart is heavy with grief. Weep for me, for I wither away. Deceit still prevails, and treachery is everywhere. Terror and traps and snares will be your lot, you people of the earth. Those who flee in terror will fall into a trap, and those who escape the trap will be caught in a snare. Destruction falls like rain from the heavens. The foundations of the earth shake. The earth has broken up. It is utterly collapsed. It is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunk. It trembles like a tent in a storm. It falls and will not rise again. For the guilt of its rebellion is very heavy. In that day, the Lord will punish the gods in the heavens and the proud rulers of the nations on earth. They will be rounded and put in prison. They will be shut, shut up in prison and will finally be punished. Then the glory of the moon will wane and the brightness of the sun will fade. For the Lord of heaven's armies will rule on Mount Zion. He will rule in great glory in Jerusalem in the sight of all the leaders of his people. God add a blessing to the readers and doers of his holy word.